Hi, welcome back to Chemithco. Today we're going to take a look at balancing redox reactions under basic conditions. Now, uh, there's different ways to actually balance uh, oxidation reduction reactions. The way I teach my students uh, and the way I kind of figured out how to do this in college was um, to do this thing called the bracket method. Now, I'm not exactly sure where I picked it up. I don't know if I actually learned it from a book or learned it from a, um, like a lab assistant or even... Um, like uh, from the professor himself, uh, but um, this is how I've actually like balanced equations for as long as I can remember. So let me show you guys how to do it. What you do is you actually bracket uh, or connect with brackets two atoms that are changing in oxidation state. So first we need to be able to identify the oxidation numbers for the elements that are changing. So in this case, let's take a look at chromium. In this molecule right here, Chromium has a plus 6 oxidation number. Okay. Um, for the chromium that you see over here, this is right in this section right here, this is going to be a plus 3. Okay, so we know that the, the oxidation number is changing for that chromium. And if we take a look at the sulfurs, because this is a negative 2, the oxidation number would be automatically whatever the charge of that ion would be. And this sulfur and its normal elemental state would be zero. All right, so this is what I'll show you. We put a bracket here, and we put a bracket here to connect those atoms. All right, so now, let's count. Are the chromiums balanced? And the answer is yes. There is one chromium on the left, one chromium on the right. Now, how many electrons did the chromium gain when it went from plus six to plus three? And, if you understand, it must have gained three electrons. That's the reason why its positive charge decreased when it went from left to right. Now let's take a look at the sulfur. So sulfur has a negative two and a zero. Now in order to get from negative two to zero, it must have lost two electrons. Now let's take a look at the numbers of electrons between the two atoms that are changing in oxidation state. Are those balanced? And the answer is no. So we need to multiply this by two and we need to multiply these by 3. And since those elements are bracketed together, it makes it easy. We put a 3 in front of this one, and a 3 in front of this one. We put a 2 in front of this one, and a 2 in front of this one. Now we're almost done. So now we have to actually count the negative charges, and since we're balancing in basic conditions, we can go ahead and add OH- and H2O to help us in the balancing component. So now let's take a look. Let me clear the screen. Okay, so what we did is just rewrote the equation um, without the brackets, so we can kind of uh, declutter the equation. Now, let's count the total negative charges on the left. And as we can see, there's a negative 2 right here, okay, but that's times 2, so that's a negative 4 for that molecule. And there's a negative 2 right here, but then that's times 3, so that's a negative 6. So negative 4 plus negative 6, that comes out to be a negative 10 total charge on the left-hand side. And there are no charges on the right, so the charge is zero. Now, since we're balancing this in basic conditions, like I said earlier, we can add an OH- minus to the equation and an H2O to help us balance the equation. Now, if we add OH-, minus, we have to add it to the side that um, is more positive. You know, in this case, we would have to add it to this side to make sure that the, balance, the charges balance out. If I add it to this side, what happens is this becomes more negative and gets further and further away from zero. So that's not going to be able to work for us. So how many hydroxides or OH minuses do we add to the right side? Well, since that's a negative 10 right there, we need to add a plus 10 OH minuses. Okay? Now, now that we've done that, the only thing left for us to do is to add waters to the other side. Now how many waters do we actually have to add? Well, the way to figure this out is we count the hydrogens. So we, there's hydrogens here and there's hydrogens there. So there's 10 hydrogens here. And there's 3 times 2, that gives me 6 hydrogens right there. So 10 and 6, that's 16 total hydrogens on the right. And there's none on the left, so what do we do? Well, we add enough waters to balance out the hydrogens, which is 8. And there you go. That's our balanced equation. So let me just get rid of all the clutter. So this is our entire balanced equation. 
And that's how to balance redox reactions under basic conditions using the bracket method. Uh, if you have any questions, send me an email and I'll talk to you guys soon.